Okay, first of all, I want to thank Jonathan for making practice files for all of our pieces. So um, we'd sent the Yay. link out before. Please, um, they're under practice files, music for glory. So they're sorted by um, piece. And this one, for instance, has MIDI files, but a lot of them have um, different formats that you can open in various software. So as an example, I downloaded this Bakusi Regina Celi. And it pops up like this on MuseScore. And so um, can everyone hear my audio? Yes. 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 Okay. Great. So you can just play it as it is. OK. And now for some features that make it interesting to manipulate. Um, first of all, this is Malik, the play. Melike, were we supposed to hear that? I did not hear that. Yeah, Melike, I thought you meant could we hear you speaking, but it, we could oh. barely hear yeah, the music. I, I could hear the music, but the volume was really low compared I with your speaking volume. I can't hear it. Hmm. It says I'm sharing computer sound. Well, can we, uh, we can, can you turn the volume the way up. I can increase the master volume and see if this is better for you guys. God, that's loud. Yeah, that's good. Oh my God, that's so loud. Is that better? I'm going to turn it down a little bit. That was like too loud. I know. Here. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing you can do on the play panel. Another thing you can do is this conductor hand right here. It can count you off. So when you hit play, it gives you a measure. And then you can start singing. You can also click on this metronome um, play metronome during playback so that you can play the metronome all the way throughout. So you can also adjust the tempo. So if this is too fast for you right now, you can slow it down as you're singing along. Sorry, hold on. It's pretty cool. Um, now there's, I'm going to show you the mixer panel. So these are from view. So here you can see that there are five lines and five tracks over here. And so you can, this S stands for solo and M stands for mute. So for instance, you can hear your line as a solo. Let's, um, hit play here. <laughs> it's extremely slow. Let, I want to slow solo the alto line. You can do two lines at the same time. You can also You can also mute yourself and play everyone else's line so that this is Carol's favorite. It's like karaoke. You can basically sing your line uh, with the rest of the choir, but your part's isolated. Also known as music minus one. <laughs> yes. So I'll play this. It's a nice tool. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can change instruments. So if I want the um, soprano to sound like a trumpet, gosh, that's annoying.
You can also, I don't know if you guys, if you can hear this on your computer, but the panning is different on each voice part. So um, on, when I'm listening to this on my computer, the soprano part is panned to the left. So it shows up on my left ear. Um, so you can use that to differentiate your part from others. So are there any questions at this point? Or any other features? A lot of the chefs uh, I work with are always looking for something new. They're very particular. Whoever has TV on the background, turn it off. Barb, I think. Can you change the key? Barb, you need to mute. We're recording. Uh, okay, hang on. Uh, mute. How do we find the bottom mute? left corner? Uh, no. <laughs> so, can you change the key, Melikay? Uh, well, you can select all and transpose up or down. Um, it might take some finagling with the notes, maybe, but let's see. I mean, what I do is like if you, it's when you push the up button, it's Oh, I guess you need to change the key signature. I'm sure. Can you can, can you leave the music as it is, but just transpose it up when playing? Um, interesting question. I have not seen I that. I don't think so. I don't think so. But the transpose you can just keep a transposed copy. Yeah, I mean you can. I just, mean, I, I just... do transpose all the time. <laughs> I do transpose all the time. Yeah, I mean, what I do is I just go up or down with my arrow key and it, it can go, you know, it can change keys. Okay, so I missed that. So if you want to transpose up or down, what do you do exactly? Oh, look, you can transpose by interval up or down. You can transpose up a minor third, for instance. And let's see what it does. There you go. Boom. Hey. And that was in tools. Tools transpose. Okay. Yep. You can also open MIDI files um, if there's no MuseScore file or MXL. So the file that I just opened was MXL, which is a music XML file. But MuseScore also opens MIDI files. Not all of them are formatted with the lyrics or anything, but it's still a good practice tool. Um, this one sounds like this. So, yeah, um, there's this Muse score is very powerful, and it, the best part is that it's free. Hmm. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions offline and also they have really good documentation online you can look up you can google any new score question and someone might have asked it already do they have a tutorial online uh, i think they do i haven't looked it up but they do have a lot of stuff online and discussion boards and everything and we can ask on slack right if we yes yeah we can make a slack channel for you know new score if mm -hmm. people want so as Milica said in, in an email, I'm also available to help uh, advise. Okay. Great. So if there are no other questions, I'm going to stop the recording. Um, quick, very basic question. So uh, we open Muse Score, and then we double click on the file that we want, and then we go up to the play arrow in the top bar in the middle, and that's how we get all these great uh, how the play panel gets opened up? Ah, so here's the play button. You can also loop things. Um, I didn't look at that ahead of time, but like if there are three or four measures that you want to keep playing over and over again, you can do that. Um, for the play panel and mixer, I get to that from view. So this is the play panel and this is the mixer. It's pretty straightforward. Oh, and you have to download the file before you open it, obviously, but. Um, yeah. And if you, if you wanted to loop a few measures, how do you do that? Do you select the measures or? I didn't look at that ahead of time, but we can try and figure it yes, out. Yes, you select the measures. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Um, Malik, I have a question. You, you're, you, you're working on a Mac, I work on a Mac. Do we know that the interface is the same on, on a Windows machine? The interface is very similar. It's, it looks about the same. Yeah, I use Windows. If anybody has Windows questions, you can ask me. I have a question. I, I tried to um, open application on my MacBook. I'm, I'm learning how to use my, my new computer. Um, I got it a few months ago, but I'm still learning. And it's, I get an error message. It says that uh, it can be opened because Apple cannot check it for malicious software. Oh, it's so, okay. Um, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, you can ignore that if you think it's a trusted source. And I think the general consensus is that we trust the MuseScore developers not to put a yeah. virus in our computers. Yeah, um, I trust it, but I just can't open it. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, for that, I think you go to Finder and you right click and um, let's see. Uh, score. There's like a secure open. I don't know how to do it, but you should Google it. There's an answer for that, okay. but I don't know right now. There's a way to bypass that error message, basically. Okay, I'm going to try looping these measures. So I selected this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Woo, did it. <laughs> Super easy. <laughs> and to select, you just click and drag like you would anywhere? Yeah, that's what okay. I did. Um, I do uh, shift, shift click, shift otherwise click. it might drag notes around. We don't want that. Okay, I'm gonna stop the session now.